Hey there, and thanks for watching. I'm excited to share with you today my sources and uses. Now, if you're at all familiar with our models at ACRE, you'll know that over the past few years, we've gotten into a discipline of building models using what we call bolt-on modules. They're really disparate modules that run independent of one another, but then when linked together, make for a, a full uh, standalone real estate model. And it really makes it easier to build models in a fast and efficient way. And it also uh, limits the number of errors that you have when you build in this fashion. And so this particular module is a module that I use largely when I'm building either value add or development models, but it also can be used in an acquisition model if, if you may have capitalized costs as part of your acquisition that, that you want to model in a more robust way. So let me walk you through how to use this module. Now, the first thing you'll note is there are two tabs when you open this file. There's the version tab to help you know, okay, what, which version of the module you're using. In this case, version 1.0 is what we're looking at. And there's, then there's an S and U, sources and uses worksheet. And this worksheet is meant to be dragged and dropped into your model or into a fresh workbook. And then from here, you could build out the balance of your model. It's broken up into four sections, and I'm going to go through those sections now in the balance of the time for this video. This section of the module includes just general model assumptions, things like analysis start date, uh, number of units. If you have different type of measurement types, as I do, square feet, meters squared, perhaps units. Um, it also includes a S-curve steepness. And that's a basic input that I often will throw in the back of my, my model in like a data section, a back end of my model. And then here uh, I have a refinance or sale month. That's the month where really the sources and uses end, uh, either a payoff of the debt via permanent debt or a payoff of uh, the debt via a sale. So those are general assumptions. These assumptions will either be overridden by other assumptions in your model. So you might link this to an analysis start date input that you have in the summary section, um, or you might move this to another section of the model. And so in all likelihood, these here will be moved to somewhere else in your model. But for now, or for the module, they're placed here at the top. The second section then is our uses of capital. And now we get into the meat of the model. Uh, and this uses of capital include things like land costs, hard costs, soft costs, really those line items that go into your project budget. And if you've used any of our models, these inputs will be uh, familiar to you. Here we have off to the left, the names of the line items within each of the section. So under land costs, of course, you have purchase price, you may have due diligence costs, closing costs. Uh, by default, it includes five line items. Now you can add or delete line items uh, fairly easily. So to add a line item, you just simply select an entire row within the range of line items. You don't want to select the bottom or the top, but you want to select somewhere in the middle. So maybe here, just right click and choose insert. And that's just going to insert a blank row. And then you'll just copy maybe the row immediately below it here, copy that entire row, and then paste it, control V right above it. Now, the reason why that works, if we come out to the far right, you'll notice that once we get beyond our cash flow section, you get into what we call the back end calculations. And each one of these line items, all of the calculations that relate to that line item uh, are on that same row. And that way we can just simply insert a row and copy and all of these calculations, uh, in this case, I'm looking at S-curve calculations, uh, and that's the end of our backend section. Or in this case here, we're looking at growth and decline calculations. All those live on one row, and then it's just a matter of either inserting a row, copy and pasting, or we can go ahead and delete a row. And the model stays intact. So uh, th these are our line items. You'll label them uh, as appropriate. We then have a start and an end, and this is where we're forecasting some amount. So in the case of land cost, 
in all likelihood, all of your land costs are happening in time zero, in month zero, right at the beginning of your analysis period. Um, but when we get into hard costs, say, these items happen over a period of time. So for instance, construction costs, maybe they start in month one and they end in month 24, or perhaps they start in month one and end in month 27. Right? And that's the length of time in which they occur. And then we have a method by which we can forecast those cash flows. So here we have a budget of 10 million in construction costs. And we can choose, and I'll open up this drop down menu, five options for forecasting. We can do straight line. That means an even amount in each period, starting in month one and ending in month 27. We can do S curve. That's gonna start light and get heavier in terms of cost until the middle of our S curve is the max cost. And then it slowly burns off until the end is low again, All right, And that is meant to mimic kind of a typical construction period where you ramp up and you, you kind of hit your peak and then you, you slow down towards the end. That's an S curve. We also have the ability to do steady growth that starts small and grows to a max at the end. And then we can also do steady decline, which is the inverse of that. Starts high and then gradually tapers off towards the end. And then finally, we can choose detail. Now, what detail is, is we assume when we're detailing that we're, we are going to override the values in these cells. So to do that, so right now, when you, when you put detail at it uh, defaults to a straight line. But let's imagine that we want these, this 10 million to be spent in two times. So I'm first gonna override all of these by changing them to a zero. And then I'll come and I'll put, let's say in month five, five million. And then let's do month, I don't know, 17, five million. And you'll notice there's this check, right? So when the sum of all the values out to the right don't equal our budget, then this will read error. If it does equal our budget, it will say okay. And that way we know that we've modeled the total amount, this 10 million, correctly. Let me undo that. I'm gonna go back to what we had. Now if you are going to if you're going to revert from detail back to any of the others, you either need to undo what you had done, or you just need to come here to the very first cell. So let's say that, uh, like so. Let's say we want to revert back to, I don't know, S-curve. The problem is the S-curve now isn't working because we had overridden those cells. Just come to this very first cell, month zero, copy it, all the way out to the right, paste, and that will revert everything back to how it was, okay? Um, so that's how we forecast out our line items. Finally, there's some carry costs, and, and this is uh, one small wrinkle within the uses section. The operating shortfall and capital, capitalized interest, uh, or our interest reserve, these two are calculated automatically, and I'll talk about that here in a moment. Financing fees, however, are calculated based on a similar methodology as we used above in land, hard, and soft costs. So that is our uses of capital. Now let's talk sources of capital, uh, which our sources must match our uses, right? So we have the ability to choose up to three equity tranches. If we don't want to use any one of these and we just simply update the percentage of equity out here to the right, so let's say 100% in general partner, 0% in general partner two, therefore limited partner, partner becomes 0% and all of the equity is contributed by this one party. And we can just simply put here, um, equity, right? And just put NA for these other two and hundred percent. And then we could come down here and you ha we can choose up to two tranches of debt. Let's imagine it's just one. So I'll do NA here and let's just do construction debt. And in this case, if we only want one tranche, we would have the percentage of debt be 100%. And now we have equity and we have a construction uh, loan. Now you've seen, you're seeing some, well, first off, uh, we can also choose the interest rate. Now this assumes 
a fixed rate or an average rate over the loan period. So in this case, I could change it to, I don't know, um, four. Um, and this rate doesn't matter because we've zeroed out our second tranche of debt. But then you're gonna see, you see this red popping up. Now what's happening is we have a target loan to cost. Let's say our target loan to cost is 60%. Because I intentionally avoid circular references in all of my models, and that's for a variety of reasons, number one, for accuracy, number two, for speed of the model. Uh, what, I, what I generally do is I use this methodology that I've built into this module, and then I add a, a, a macro, I write a macro that automatically solves for the 60% Tar or for the target loan to cost. However, to make a module insertable into another model, uh, it's best not to have embedded macros, it's best not to have embedded named ranges or named cells, and so those aren't included in the model. However, I've added just some signals to help you manually solve for the target loan to cost. And it's really simple. And then you can follow this methodology. You can even build your own macro if you wanted to then automate this in your own model. But here we have a target loan to cost of 60%. This cell calculates the actual loan to cost that the model has. And in order to solve for this 60%, we just simply come into this cell, which right now is blue. And that's intentional. Watch, watch what happens once we get this to 60%. We're going to adjust this value until this value is equal to our target. And there's two options. The first is we can just do this manually. And we'll say, okay, let's go four and a half million. You'll notice, oh, that goes up. I'm going the wrong direction. Let's go five and a half million. I'm getting closer. How about five, six? You get the idea. And that, that could take a while. 5.8 million got us there. So that's an iterative process, but you'll notice as soon as that equals that, the this turns to a black font cell, which is not an input cell, it's a, it's a calculation cell. And the alert that appeared here at the top disappears. However, let's say, uh, let's go to 65%. Do we really wanna go through that iterative process? Well, there's a, there's a faster way. And that is we go to the data ribbon out here to the right, what if analysis and goal seek. And you can actually write a macro that will do this exact thing. So what we want is we want to set this cell right here to be equal to what? We want to equal to that cell, but you can actually link to that cell. So you just write 65.0% by changing which cell? That cell. So we're going to change this cell until this cell is equal to that value. Hit OK. It iterates until, or it basically gets this cell to an amount that makes this cell equal to this cell. And now those alerts shut off. Again, we can do that over again. Let's go back to 60, go to data. What if analysis, goal seek, set that cell to now 60% by changing this cell, hit OK and it will run that quick and easy. And again, you can then write a macro that will automatically do that for you. You click a button uh, and it will iterate until this cell is at a value that makes this percentage equal to your target loan to cost. Now, finally, the last section is, in this case, called operating cash flow. In all likelihood, uh, you'll either delete this altogether or you'll, or you'll link this to your, your cash flow from operation. But really what needs to happen is the values in this row need to be linked to the cash flow from operations line in your operating cash flow module. So uh, right now I just have some dummy values, but you would actually link this to wherever you're calculating cash flow from operations in your model. The reason why this is important is this cash flow from operations row will be used both to calculate operating shortfall, which you'll notice here is 84,000. If we scroll up to here, operating shortfall, 84,000. So this is basically turns your operating shortfall into a 
use of capital. And that use of capital then allows for a source of capital to cover the cost of your operating shortfall. But likewise, you now at some point might, uh, will likely have positive operating or positive cash flow from operation or positive operating cash flow. And that can be used to pay for your construction debt or your interest. And so we come up here and you'll see this capitalized interest is net of your a lease up income or what, whatever income you had, any positive cash flows you had in your cash flow from operations line. So anyway, that is my sources and uses module. Let me know if you have any questions about the module. You'll be seeing uh, new updated versions of the module added as your feedback comes in and as I continue to use this. But in the meantime, enjoy the module and uh, thank you for your time.